In the last video, we finished talking about piano's uh, axioms, and uh, I also talked about piano's addition and multiplication, and I gave you two examples on how to how to use those, and we also talked about the two equations that you can take advantage of in, in order to make your proofs a little bit more easier. You could have derived those from piano's axioms, but I'm sure you uh, th that you uh, don't want to waste your time. In this video, I will be teaching you one of the most important and and most powerful uh, proof technique. It's called induction. Induction. <clears throat> this proof strategy is used the most in, in, in real analysis along with contradiction. We will be doing that later on. But for now, you should be amazed at how induction works. And you use induction to prove something for all. So if you want to prove, to prove for all all natural numbers so if you see that you well you maybe you think to yourself well i can prove it for the for for number one i can prove that something works for number one and then i can prove it that it works for number two and then i can just say well if it works for this and then it works for this then it therefore works for everything and that's not that's not how it works you want to have some sort of concrete method to prove it for it for all of them how you want to think about this is that if you have a book or if you have dominoes let, let me let me draw let me draw dominoes if you if you have a bunch of dominoes here and i hope this won't confuse you more than more than you need to i hope this will make sense if you have a bunch of dominoes right and you and you keep going what we want to do is that we we want to take care of this first one we want to prove that it works for this one and then we want to show that it works for the case n the case n and well we assume this we we assume that it works for this and we and our goal is that it works for the n plus one case as well so in the domino analogy so this is my analogy don't this is not mathematical the analogy is that if we push this right it will it will fall, therefore it will push this forward, this will fall, and it will keep going until we get to the case n, right? And we assume this, we, we, assume, we assume the case n, and we prove the n plus one case. So now I know you might be a little bit uh, frazzled and you might be saying to yourself, what is this guy talking about? So let me make it more mathematically accurate. So it, actually, let me say it in simple language first. You first, number one, what you wanna do, prove it, well show, show it works, it works for one or if, your set does not include one, your first element. If it it's some sort of weird, weird set. So that's what you wanna do. And then number two, you wanna assume the nth case, nth case, and prove. Or well, your that is your proof, so you wanna show. Show the n plus one case. And even this might be a little bit confusing. So let me actually define it for you. So this is the defi definition of induction, proof by induction. So let P of n be some statement depending uh, on n being an element of the naturals. So let P of n uh, be uh, a, a statement, 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 where n is an element of the naturals. So this proof, as I said before, is to prove something that that your thing, your proof, your theorem works for all naturals. So you want to, this basically shows that p of n is true for all, for all n values that you give me because this is a function. So uh, we have to use associativity and commutativity, and we will use that based off the video that I made on generalized associativity and commutativity. If you haven't watched that, then go back because you need to understand how that works in order to do a proof by induction. So, um, so 
this comes from axiom uh, three from piano's axioms if you if you recall the axioms it was that if you if you have some sort of set and let's call it a k the k will be a subset of your given fancy fancy n then in order for this to be the naturals it needs to follow two conditions well one needs to be an element of k and number two if if uh, n is an element of k then uh, the successor of the successor of this value has to be in k as well so it's similar to this you have two you have two conditions that's all i'm saying i'm not saying that you use axiom three i'm just saying it's it's similar to this you're just proving that your p of n works for all all of naturals so you have two conditions that you need to meet so what is the first condition the first condition is just this you first show as i said in my analogy and in my simplification over here you show that the the, the p of one so the case one is true so it works and number two you have to show you have to you have to show that you assume that that the p of n works uh, for some n and your, your goal is to show that p of n plus one is also true so this is called the induction hypothesis so assume assume induction induction hypothesis what does this mean what is this fancy word uh, induction hypothesis just means that this thing is the same as me saying p of n assume assume p so sorry assume p of n is true so that's what i said you assume the nth case so assume induction hypothesis means assume p of n is true so that's a okay that's a that's a r that's a u it's tr okay i can't erase it on on this writing pad but it's true it's true that's what you want you want to assume that p of n is true so assume your induction hypothesis so your goal is to prove assume induction hypothesis and prove that p of n plus one is true and that's what i said before is true and that's exactly what i said before you want to assume the nth case and you want to work on your n plus one case if you can do both one and two then you have just proven yourself your theorem or whatever you're trying to prove by uh, induction and that's what induction is induction is a very powerful proof strategy and when you have to prove uh, things for all natural numbers induction is what you use so let me give you an example so let me actually give you a theorem this is a this is a theorem theorem so show or prove me prove to me that's a t prove to me that one plus two plus three and so on if you keep adding all of them together to all the way to n will be equal to me saying uh, n times n plus 1 divided by 2 for all for all n in the naturals number system so to prove this we have uh, we have to let p of n so which is the statement of 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on plus n equal to n times n plus 1 over 2 we 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 have to this be the p of n statement this whole thing is p of n so we show that it works for one so how do we do that well we just say that is is okay so we we start with one it does it work for p of one we know that we know that just one will be uh, so we start with this so we say one is this equal to me saying one times one plus one over two if it works then we would be satisfying the first condition so uh, well okay let's do it this way is one equal to one times one plus one 
over two. So at this stage, you can assume normal arithmetic. You don't have to use piano's axioms. Uh, the, when you will be using induction, you will be using them in sequences and series and in functions. So you don't need to worry about actually going through as, oh, whoa, this is a successor. Actually, if we want to do it that way, we could, but we don't have to. If you wanted to, then it would take too long, especially at this stage. So I am just training you to be more, um, more, more comfortable with how you will be doing it later on. You know that one plus one is two, so one times two divided by two. Then one times two is two, and two divided by two is one. Clearly, it's equivalent on both sides. Therefore, your case one works. That's that's half of your work. So, number two, how you want to do this is you want to assume assume that one plus two plus three and so on all the way to plus n is actually equal to n times n plus one over two you are assuming the nth the the, the nth case so you want to show and assume that this is true is true and i have to show you i have to show you show you that one plus two and so on all the way to n plus n plus one is equal to me saying n sorry n times n plus one over two plus n plus one this is p of n one what i what i'm trying to show you is uh p of n uh, plus one so how we want to do this we we just start we just start from one side so well we know well let's start from the left side so this is my left hand side oh yeah lhs means left hand side if I use RHS, that means right and side. So this is just shorthand notation for left hand side and right hand side. So let's start from left hand side and I have to get to this equation, this this thing that I said that I could show you. So we know that uh, we, we we start with the left hand side as i said so we say one plus two and so on is plus n uh, plus uh this n plus one will be equal to what so if you if you look at this from this point all the way to this this point that is what we are assuming. We said that 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to n is equal to this equation. We are assuming that. So if you are assuming that, this means that you can you can replace these with each other. You can replace these with each other. So you would have n times n plus 1 over 2. And you just bring this along. Plus n plus 1. However, sorry, not that. This is exactly what I needed to show you. This is exactly what I needed to show you. And if you wanted to be a little bit more accurate, then you could just say that, well, you, we, we could have worked with this. We could have given this a 2 times 2 and, and, and then added them. And then we could do that here as well. But basically what we have just done is that I have just proved to you that it works for this. And that's how easy it is because this is equal to this and that's exactly what i needed to show to you in order for you to believe that th this theorem is true and as you may remember once we finish we have to put qed now this example might have been a little bit too easy for you or you might or, or it could be hard to it depends on the person but for me at least did this this would have been a, a disappointment this because it doesn't show um, the power of induction to such a great degree. So just to do justice to the proof strategy of induction, let me let me prove to you another theorem just for just for the sake and uh, of induction and for the integrity of induction. Let me let me show you that one squared 
plus 2 squared, and so on. All the way to plus n, plus n squared is equal to n times n plus 1, which is being multiplied to 2n plus 1 divided by 6. So the, you open up your exam booklet and it says prove this. Prove this. So one thing that you may notice, and this would be a great, great segue, which, which, which would introduce you to to uh, the sigma notation. Any time you see an adding, it's it kind of wastes your time. I'm sure you care about your time, and I'm sure you care about your mark. So, in order to save uh, your time and your mark, you probably want to use sigma notation for uh, the repetitive adding. So. What you have here is when you, if you don't know how this works, is you use this symbol to show that you will be adding infinitely. Now you don't. Well, okay, I should correct myself. It's it's not infinitely. You provide bounds. You you say you start at this point and you end at this point. So now if this had a uh, infinity sign on top, then it then it would be infinite. But let's not do that. Let's actually work to the nth case. So we can say that this thing is the same as me saying that is equivalent to me saying that, well, start at, okay, so we are clearly, you, you clearly see that it's always some value. Actually, let me use a letter that's not common or let's use K for not common because common starts with the C and not common. We will just use a K. So anyways, that's that's kind of stupid, but um, you want to have some sort of letter which you want to address, which fits what you want to do. And you clearly see that you can put any value in here and you're just squaring it. That's what's happening. You put one in here and you square and then two and then you put n in this and then you square it. So we start at k equaling one. You clearly don't start at zero. Okay, you don't put a zero here if you don't start at a zero. You put a zero if you start at a zero. We start at a one, therefore I put a one. And this is called a lower bound, lower bound, lower bound. And it's important that you understand this because this is where you start. This is where you start. And <clears throat> this at the top, you put your upper bound. And let me put n here because you go all the way to n. And you don't put k equals n because we already know that you're talking about k equaling some value. So you put k equals 1 and, and then it goes all the way to n. And this is called the upper bound, upper bound. And this is where it ends. Okay, so you want to put this and this is meaningless unless you have some sort of k addressing what's actually happening to this. This is k squared. Okay, so this thing, so let me rewrite it here, the, the, the sigma starting at k equals 1 going all the way to n of k squared is the equivalent of me saying 1 squared, okay? You understand that by this, and what what is this huge symbol for? That means after you input your value, you want to add whatever, you're, you, whatever you have here. You want to keep adding it. So this is add 2 squared. And then again, sigma power, add 3 squared. You keep going all the way to n because that's where it ends. So anyways, if you, if you understand that, let me rewrite the theorem in the following manner. We are basically saying that the, that the sigma, where, when it starts with 1 of k squared and goes all the way to n, that is equal to me saying n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over over 6. <clears throat> now, um, to do this, to use induction for this, again, we have to show the, the both cases. So let's let's show one of the cases. Does one work for this? So let me let me put a let me put a one here. So k goes from 1 to 1. So it would be k squared, which will be 1 squared. And we know that's 1. So that's the left hand side. This is the this this whole thing was the left hand. I should have put it at the start, but I hope you understand this. Right hand side, let's put a one in there. One times one plus one 
times 2 times 1 plus 1 divided by 6. So 1 times 2, because 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3, and this is being multiplied as well, 6. 1 times 2, this is 2, and 2 times 3 is 6. So we have 6 over 6, and we know that is 1. Clearly, our right-hand side is equal to the left-hand side, so left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, therefore. And again, if you don't, if, if you haven't watched my logic videos, anytime I use this symbol, that means it implies it's a if-then kind of thing. So, so left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Therefore, we are we have proved our first condition. So we write QED, which means conclusion of our proof. It's not to the whole proof, so we write QED to the first, the first section. Now, let's do the other, the the other thing. So actually, let me write down uh, our equation because we want to have it as a reference. So we have the sigma starting at k equals 1 going to n of k squared, which we said was equal which we said was equal to n times n plus 1 times 2 n plus 1 over 6. So in the previous slide, I just proved to you how the first condition is met. Now I show you the second condition. Assume the nth case. So assume that sigma of n is, and then we have lower bound k equals 1, k squared is equal to n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over over 6. So if, and I have to show you, so I, okay, so I have to show you that this works for the n plus 1 case. So how do we do that? So I have to show you that this works for uh, sigma starting at k equals 1, k squared. However, however, we change the end to this. Why do we do that? Because what we are just saying that, well, it works for the n plus 1 case, n plus 1 case. Clearly, you're not going to n because if you were going to n, then it would it would end at n. You're ending it at n plus 1. So we put that it ends at n plus 1. And we say that I, I have to show you that the sigma of starting at k equals 1 going to n plus 1 of k squared is the same thing as me saying to you that it's n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6 plus plus n plus 1 now to do now to do justice to this let me let me make it a little bit complex so when we finish we are we we are more proud of ourselves rather than just um, <clears throat> uh, than just being oh well this was easy so this is equivalent to me saying n times uh, that 2n plus 1. Now what I am doing is I'm adding 6 to both sides, uh, to, uh, to, to the numerator and to the denominator. That would, that makes it eligible that I can, I can add it to this, this denominator. So plus 6 n plus 1 over, over 6. So for this, um, we could keep going, but I think this is enough. I don't, uh, you can simplify this, but there's no point of me doing that. Why Why waste your time? So we can assume this. I have to show you this. So let's start with this. Let's, let's start with the left-hand side. So we start with the left-hand side. So what does this mean? The sigma of starting at k equals 1 and going to n plus 1 of k squared what does this mean? This just means that it goes from, well, uh, the, the 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared and so on. It, 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 it arrives at the nth case and it will square that too. However, it keeps going to n plus 1 squared. 
Now, to, the, to, to this, we know that from this point to this point, what we are basically doing is that we, we are, this is the same thing as me writing what? As me writing sigma k equals 1, so sigma k equals 1 going to n of k squared plus n plus 1 squared. Now, this would be the same thing as me as as me saying that well this we assumed that this was equal to what we assumed that this was equal to this this case this case and oh i now just realized that i didn't put a squared here and and there's supposed to be a square there so therefore there's a there's a square there just just so you know that's my bad i should have had that before sorry so we know that this is equal to to this therefore since they're equal we can just replace them so we say well n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6 we can add this we can add this to n plus 1 squared now we can't just add these so i have to multiply the, the numerator by 6 and divide it by 6 because why if you don't remember this why are we doing this that's the same thing as me multiplying this thing by one right and it wouldn't change the value of the whole statement so one is equal to what it's equal to six divided by six and exactly that's what we need in order to add it to this anyways so you keep going and then you would get n times n plus one times two n plus one plus 6 n plus 1 squared is being divided is being divided by 6 so if you notice we started from this point and we got to this point however what did i say at the start of the proof i said we can assume this stuff and i have to show you that this that let me okay so uh, this, which which is this, is equal is is equal to to this because I just you know simplified this is equal to this. Sorry for the mess, and that's exactly what I have shown you here. So this just concludes the second portion of my proof i have just proven to you how the left the left hand side is equal to the right hand side by just starting at the left hand side so this would make it a uh, left hand side is equal to right hand side therefore qed to second portion and that's how we conclude uh, our proof by induction. I hope this was helpful to you.